Roger not necessarily a, a giant out there compared to maybe like a Caleb, for instance, but how does he, how does he make up uh, for some of that, you know, when he's going up against bigger receivers? I mean, he has good feet and good, good speed and good feet. Um, you know, he's a physical guy, even though he's small. You know, he still can get physical at the line of scrimmage, and he's shown that um, early in camp. He's done a good job so far. What did, what did a year of being a starter do for you in terms of your development? Like, how, how much better do you think you got last year with all that playing? Um, getting used to the speed, you know, understanding that, you know, I can play with guys, certain guys, you know, me being younger, coming to the league, you know, you, you have a, a big outlook on guys and you think guys are faster than what they are until you get out there and actually play. Then you can measure yourself and, you know, size yourself up. But um, for me, I just felt like, you know, the more I play, the more um, consistent and more comfortable I can be out there playing. And then from there, I just got to up my game. What does elevating the game to the next level, what, what does that look like? I'm um, getting down to the details. You know, I, I know pretty much really familiar with the defense. Now it's um, trying to understand how the offense is trying to attack us. And uh, maybe I can get a jump on a play. You know, if I'm blitzing off the edge, maybe I can get a, um, a, a bite on what the offense is trying to do in the run game or the pass game. How about from a leadership perspective, how much more can you grow in that role? I'm um, helping guys around me. You know, if I can help the younger guys, um, Roger, Caleb, Theo, um, Michael Griffin, you know, Bring them along to get them guys up to speed so that when preseason starts, they're ready to go as well. When the pads come on, it's different. You know, I mean, when you have jerseys and you try and shoot your hands to jam a guy up, it might slide off the shoulder. But when you have shoulder pads on, it's more surface surface level that you can hit. So um, we'll be able to see on Monday, you know, how, how much receivers can get open and how well we can cover. Amani, with having so much experience in the in, in the back end with, with KB now, do you feel like you've kind of reached a point to where you guys can maybe try different things just because you kind of know where he's going to be and, and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, we've definitely, um, you know, this offseason we've been, we meet one-on-one, -on -one, me, him, and then um, Coach Scott Booker, and on how we, we can change different coverages up, you know, how we can do different things and how we can make things look the same. But, you know, when the ball snaps, we end up playing different coverage from there. So me and him have definitely been working on that this offseason. Season. What's it mean to you to be mentioned as you and he is one of, if not the best safety tandem in the league right now? I mean, it means a lot, but, you know, we definitely show that what we can do last year, but I mean, we, we watched film and we've seen that there's a lot of things that we left out there that, you know, this year we're going to make up for and we're going to be on top of it. Hey, Monty, in an interview earlier this summer with my colleague Justin Mello, you mentioned Theo Jackson and what he looked like uh, in June. What is, has he done? What have you seen so far? in training camp from him and his development? Just improvement. I mean, every day coming out here, he's improving, he's learning, he's not making the same mistakes. Um, and he's just learning from me and KB. I mean, he goes out here, he makes a play. Um, when we're in the meeting rooms, he's able to answer all the questions. He's able to you know, teach the whole defense and if he, if he really wanted to. So he's done a great job so far. And then you went out and did it. How nice is it to see the defense respond in that way? Yeah, that's definitely something we put emphasis on, you know, creating turnovers, getting the bad ball back to our offense. And, you know, they're going to come in bunches. We've got to make sure that we're on top of it and make sure we can limit all the yardages as we can. And then when the, when the plays do come our way, that we make them. What do you see from the receivers you guys are competing with on a, on a daily basis? Um, Nick Westbrook is a guy that, you know, he continues to be open, get open on guys. Um, you got Mason Kin Kinsley in the slot who's been working the nickel a lot. And then you got um, Austin Hooper who's, you know, over the middle getting open. I mean, there's a lot of guys on offense that are, you know, getting open, making plays. But, I mean, as far as the defense, I mean, we've done a great job of just limiting the, the big plays and big yardages. Is this more a uh, punt return that, than you have worked in, in the past, Imani? It seemed like you did a little bit in, in the past, but are you getting more rotations in that regard? Yeah, I mean, I mean, ever since I've been here, I've been kind of back there, you know, catching punts. Um, I remember I had one in the preseason last year. I had I had a little return there. But, I mean, I've always been something I just, you know, that um, Ock wants me to do to make sure that I'm able to be back there just in case, you know, something happens where I need to go back there for some guys go down. Okay. You did, it looked like you did a little bit in college. Is that right? I did a little bit in college. I wasn't the main one, but, you know, I left, I left a little early. So that senior year, I probably would have turned a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, no, it feels good. I mean, they bring the excitement. We can feel it when we're out there playing. You know, we like the atmosphere because that's what it's going to be like on game day. Obviously, it's not as many people, but, you know, we have families out here, so guys are competing. It's definitely fun. It's definitely fun when they show up. Marty, does it feel a little bit more like back to normal, so to speak? Uh, fans out here, 
you know, COVID seems to have, you know, gotten into a new stage. Uh, does it feel like, you know, is it maybe your first year or so here in this uh, franchise? Yeah, I mean, it feels good. I mean, definitely like my rookie year with their fans out here, and then we went two years without it. But, you know, it feels like it's getting back to normal. And um, as far as, you know, we want to do, we want to make sure that we continue to just make sure we take the energy from the people being out here, the fans, and that we can just transition that to the field. What would you say is the biggest difference in the rookie of Monty Booker and the one before it right now? Um, knowledge of the game. I mean, for me, when I was a rookie, things were going fast. You know, I was just trying to play – play full speed and get the special teams down. But now it's now I'm teaching guys the special team stuff that I learned when I was a rookie. And now I'm able to, you know, teach learn teach guys what I learned on defense and help them out. So definitely just leadership standpoint and just being able to help the younger guys. You said this year obviously it's a contract year. Any thoughts in regards to that or is it just kinda of like focus on football? Like how do you manage to separate those two things? I just I just focus on football. I mean, that's what I got an agent for. He handles all that stuff. And for me, I just focus on playing ball. You said Nick has been a guy that has given the secondary some trouble. What have you seen different from his game just from, you know, Nick last year to Nick now? And where has he grown to really take that step? Um, him allow, him making all the routes look the same. You know, he'll he'll make a vertical, look like a vertical, but then he'll do a dig, and then he'll do a, a comeback. So, I mean, making that – and he has speed as well. I mean, he's a big guy, but he can he can get out and run, and then he's strong as well if, he, if he's coming in to block you. It's been a long, long time to have fans out at, at training camp. How, you know, limited by the situation, but how much does that mean to you guys that you're able to have folks out again? It is nice. I mean, it's great, obviously, with the construction and some of uh, – you know, the stuff that we've done, the, you know, the amazing stuff that, that Amy's done for us here to build a, and get everybody on this campus. It's limited the space for our fans. Um, you know, we're going to do everything that we can. We've had as many, we'll have as many open practices as possible. But, you know, it's great to see these people come out here and continue to support us, um, not only here, but, but in the stadium. You know, it's, it's really been, been great, amazing. Mike. Ball was on the ground a couple of times today, mm -hmm. and you had one instance where you yelled out a holding penalty against somebody. Are those good teaching moments, despite the fact that they're mistakes? Well, it's difficult to, um, you know. I mean, the teaching moment is that that you're probably going to end up, you know, losing. You know, you're going to lose when you when you play like that, especially uh, when it when it comes down to ball security. And so, um, I think it's it's great that we can come back and finish practice and make some plays and finish strong offensively. But, um, you know, we can't let those problems snowball. Uh, let one mistake turn, you know, lead to another and lead to another. Um, you know, and it's, it's good to have spirited practices, but, um, you know, we just can't let those things, you know, mount up. Is that basically what you need or what the DBs need to be doing when they get beat in a certain circumstance, if they get beat in a certain, certain, certain circumstance, just to finish? Yeah, that's what, you know, that's what that does. That's the way we try to practice and the mentality that we preach. Offensively, we have to protect the football and the guy who has it, wherever it is, whether it's the quarterback. And, you know, those guys are all coming in. You know, they're coming in to finish. And um, sometimes when you feel like you make a play offensively, you, you make a cut, you get loose with the football or you're – you're near the sidelines, and, and so those are all things that we're going to have to learn from and, you know, continue to rep. And, you know, we're, 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 when the offense is on one field practice and taking care of it, the defense is on the other field finding ways to, to disrupt it. And so, um, you know, we, we have to continue to try to practice that way and, and hopefully take care of it offensively. Roger got on NWI serve as kind of an example of that? Yeah, I mean, I think that we've had those in, in the past, and, and Nick's got to learn from – Nick had one in, in Indianapolis or, or here against Indianapolis. Had a, had a great play, was down in the red zone and was fighting for extra yards and, and looking to try to score a touchdown. And um, the, the guys, they're coming. You know, defensively they're coming and they're not going to quit. So um, we have to continue to – that's when we have to be at our best is, is kind of when you feel like there's – uh, maybe some space, all of a sudden that space closes pretty quickly. Malik seemed a little hesitant maybe in the seven on seven and carried over into. Well, just continuing to talk about his uh, timing. You know, that's that's been the message. That's something that, that we talked about. I talked about um, that, that Pat and uh, Todd have been, you know, trying to preach to him is just making sure that the, the timing improves because uh, you only have a certain amount of time to, to get the, the pass off and then the distribution of the route and everything ties into that. Think there's a temptation sometimes to overthink. Well, I mean, I think that we all do. You know, I mean, I think when you're when you're in a new situation, new offense, um, 
going against the defense with a lot of different multiple looks and disguises. Um, that we try to make it as hard as possible in practice, and and hopefully things will start to slow down. But um, you know that that's why you practice. That's why you meet. That's why you walk through. Is so that um, you know you're only thinking maybe having a couple details for each play. What is it about Greg Maven that is? Convince you guys to bring him back a couple different times. Well, I, you know, I think he, his ability to just kind of step in and uh, do his job, um, you, you don't notice him a whole lot because he's usually doing what he's supposed to be doing. Um, he's coachable, um, he's got good size, and, uh, you know, if he can, you know, can stay healthy and be available, you know, he can, he can compete. Mike, that was how, a, how much can you learn about your offensive line specifically? Two positions up for grabs during these four days, and how important does it become on Monday? A lot. It, it comes. It comes critically important. Um, you know, once the, the pads get on, it's a different game. Um, you know, there'll be there'll be some guys that again on Monday shine that that show out uh, that maybe you know nobody expected, whether that's defensively or or offensively. So. Um, you know, this, this is all great work, and I'm glad that we were able to, for the most part, take care of each other and stay on our feet and practice. But um, ultimately, we're going to have to get, a, get the pads on and, and be able to move some people and, and try to create some angles and some spaces for our backs. And then when we throw it, be able to protect the middle of the pocket. Wasn't it much in the of development yet for uh, Nicholas Petit Frere? Improvement? Yeah. You know, there's been a lot of improvement each, each and every day. The spring was good. Uh, from a mental standpoint and, and some techniques. And then, you know, these he's had a lot of good reps. And, you know, I think late here in practice, you know, Taylor went down. He jumped up in there, which which I like. I admire. Didn't wait for a coach to say anything. Kind of just jumped in there. So I think that's a good sign, something we were talking about the other day, whether it be with Roger and a drill or, or Nick going out there. He was, jumped in there and said, I'll, I'll take it. And, you know, we moved on. He got the call, and then he came back, and you know, he got beat inside by Danico. You know, another play later, and you know, again, Danico's a good player, crafty player, and um, had, was a productive player for us last year. But those are the types of guys that he's going to have to block on Sunday. So, you know, we got to learn and stay inside out, and, uh, and and not get beat inside. Hi, Mike. What is it about Dylan Raiden's this year that you see different in terms of him as a player from his first year? Well, I think physically, I think he's better. I think he's in better shape physically. I think he's uh, stronger. I think he's just more comfortable in what we're asking him to do. And uh, you know, keep keep working on him, keep working with him, and, and kind of see where things go here in the next couple of days. How have things changed on a deep pass? Does that show the development he's had with the offense so far? Well, no. I mean, I, don't, I think that just goes to show his, his savviness and his, you know, his route craft down the field. I think when you kind of get on body sometimes with those 50-50 balls that – you know, you kind of overextend and push a guy, and the DB stumbles, and they call you know OPI. And you know, he was just able to kind of brush Caleb by and um, adjust to the football, which is you know that wasn't a penalty, and I think anything more than that is going to be a penalty. But I think where the development has come has come may, maybe more so just on the the intricacies of some of the other routes, the intermediate routes. Um, that there, that example there was just, you know, his veteran understanding of he may not run by Caleb, but his ability to still be able to, to make that play down the field um, with, with on body coverage. How do things change for guys like Woods and, and Farley once the pads go on? These are guys, you know, recovering from injuries. How does it change, like, as far as like, how you watch them and their progress? Well, I don't think it'll change much, but again, today, um, you know, we'll see how they come out of today. Um, I wouldn't anticipate the the pads making an impact uh, too much on their availability. We'll just see how they feel and then monitor from there and you know continue to try to ramp them up.